At the beginning of the movie, we're introduced to Kate, who awakens in distress within a stark white room with padded walls, dressed only in her underwear. Uncertain of her whereabouts, she surmises she's confined in an abandoned prison or psychiatric facility. Seeking help, Kate calls out, met with silence. Suddenly, terrifying sounds reminiscent of a giant animal's roar echo from beyond the chamber walls, followed by a blackout. After a couple of minutes, the sounds subside, light returns, and the chamber door swings open. Tentatively, Kate ventures into the dimly illuminated deserted corridor, gripped by an immediate sense of chill settling in. Kate notices doors to other chambers and peers through their windows, stumbling upon one where she encounters a man named Jack. Get me out of here! Kate opens the door, releasing the man from confinement. Peering cautiously into the corridor, Jack inquires if it's gone. Perplexed, the woman asks what he means, to which he expresses his reluctance to encounter the creature emitting eerie sounds. Kate reveals that the door to the chamber wasn't locked, as all the locks had disengaged due to a short circuit, much to Jack's surprise. He then asks for Kate's name, but she ruefully admits to Rem Ambering nothing about herself, prompting Jack to reveal he shares the same predicament. Together, they venture down the corridor, trying to discern their whereabouts, when suddenly, there's another power outage in the corridor. We shift to another corridor within the same enigmatic building, where two more individuals have regained consciousness, Charlie and Stacy. Charlie stands before a grill obstructing their path, gazing at a flickering light. You know, if the lights go out we'll be really screwed. As opposed to now. Then Charlie returns to Stacy's cell and asks if she's ready, but they're interrupted by approaching footsteps belonging to Kate and Jack, who soon find themselves on the same side of the grill. Kate and Jack notice that the cell behind the bars is open and loudly inquire if they can escape from there. Receiving no response, they are about to go the other way when Charlie peers out from the cell, revealing that he and Stacy also don't remember their names or how they ended up there. Kate suggests exploring the corridors from both directions and agreeing to return to the grill if anyone finds an exit. Still shivering from the cold, the strangers agree, and Stacy requests Kate to turn on the heating system if she finds it before them. The pair split up and explore the corridors. Soon, they come across a room resembling a school classroom, with words like spirit, body, mind, and light, clothes, memory written on the board. Continuing their journey, Charlie ponders what happened to all the other people who were here and why it didn't happen to them. When suddenly, a roar echoes through the corridor once more. They then find themselves at a staircase leading into pitch darkness. Charlie suggests descending, but Stacy vehemently opposes such a risky move. Undeterred, he ventures down alone and soon finds himself in the pool area, where he spots a naked girl in the water. Eventually, Stacy decides to join him, and together they observe the unfamiliar girl emerging from the pool. Soon, the girl, named Amber, notices them and invites them closer. Charlie asks if she remembers anything about herself, to which Amber replies negatively, seemingly unperturbed. Amber flirtatiously requests them to turn away so she can get dressed, but Charlie can't resist and watches her shadow. However, for a split second, the shadow takes on a menacing shape. Charlie, turning around in horror, SKS Stacy if she observed the same alarming sight as he did. However, Stacy misconstrues his concern, assuming it's solely fixated on the stranger's physique. Amber interjects with a laugh, urging Stacy to disregard Charlie's reaction as mere fear. Stacy persists, inquiring again if Amber isn't frightened herself. Amber asserts her foreknowledge of their impending fate, declaring that none shall survive. Meanwhile, Kate and Jack step into a room concealed behind a robust iron door, discovering what resembles a sensory deprivation chamber. Amidst their exploration, they stumble upon a control system. Jack endeavors to manipulate the levers governing the room's temperature. As he adjusts a lever, a cacophonous roar reverberates through the pipes and corridors. Anxiously, Kate expresses hope for Charlie and Stacy's safety, yet Jack impels her to prioritize their own well-being over that of strangers. Abruptly, they discern an unfamiliar knocking. Despite this unnerving interruption, they press on through the corridors, stumbling upon a disheveled laboratory where an elderly man lies tethered to multiple sensors. Upon closer inspection, Kate discerns signs of life in the old man, albeit not in his brain. Investigating the device to which he's connected, she discerns it has been utilized eight times prior. Although the device's function eludes her, she concludes whatever it does is irreversible. Observing Kate's familiarity with medical equipment, Jack comments on her apparent expertise, prompting Kate's admission of memory loss regarding her medical knowledge. Within the laboratory, they stumble upon a pair of pristine lab coats, opting to don them for warmth. Their search continues, with Kate's attention drawn to a tray atop a cupboard. As Jack reaches for it, the tray crashes to the floor with a resounding bang. Frozen in fear, they dread attracting malevolent entities with the noise. Jack cautiously peers into the corridor with a scalpel in hand, but, thankfully finds it deserted. Returning to Kate, he reassures her, but then... 
a man named Dave launches a vicious assault on Jack and Kate, erroneously identifying them as doctors due to their white lab coats. He vehemently asserts that they won't subject him to the same fate as the old man. Kate swiftly interjects, explaining their innocence and gesturing to their undergarments to highlight their shared predicament with Dave. Gradually, Dave's rage subsides, and he discloses his own disorienting awakening in a white room with fragmented memories. Kate emphasizes the importance of unity in their quest for escape, prompting Dave to reveal his discovery of an exit at the corridor's end, albeit obstructed by an electrically locked door. Despite Dave's attempts to breach it, the door remains sealed, leading Kate to connect the recent mysterious knocking to Dave's endeavors. However, Jack remains unsettled, noting that it fails to account for the other, more ominous sounds. Suddenly, looming shadows materialize, morphing into a monstrous form before their eyes, as they watch in terror, transfixed by the wall, when suddenly, from the depths of the shadows, something akin to a spear violently pierces Dave, sending shockwaves through Kate and Jack. Reacting swiftly, they flee the laboratory in a panic. Glancing backward, they witness the wounded Dave staggering into the corridor, only to be ensnared by the monstrous entity once more. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, Kate and Jack sprint as far from the laboratory as possible, only to realize the relentless pursuit of the creature, its terrifying roar echoing behind them. Their escape route obstructed by a gate, Jack frantically attempts to break the padlock barring their path. The encroaching darkness threatens to engulf them, but Jack's determined efforts pay off as he manages to unlatch the door just in time. Seeking refuge in a nearby white chamber, they watch in trepidation as the monstrous entity hurdles past, vanishing into the depths of the corridor. Regaining her composure, Kate tends to Jack's wounds with practice skill, prompting him to once again remark on her apparent familiarity with such tasks. Reflecting on her lost memories, Kate expresses hope for eventual recollection of her past identity. Emerging from their temporary sanctuary, they locate a staircase leading to a pool area. Descending the stairs, they find no trace of the trio who had been present moments before, only crimson trails leading to another doorway. Their search leads them to the changing room, where Amber, Charlie, and Stacy emerge unexpectedly from the lockers. <laughs> Charlie introduces Amber to the group, and then inquires if they've made any discoveries. Jack and Kate recount their encounter with a shadowy entity that consumed another individual suffering from amnesia, much like themselves. Amber proposes they follow her in search of an exit and exits the changing room. While Charlie and Stacy harbor skepticism toward Amber, Jack remains steadfast in his trust, asserting there's nothing to fear. However, their trust is shattered when Amber transforms into a colossal shadow. Charlie recalls similar occurrences, but Kate insists they continue to follow Amber, emphasizing their shared predicament. Their journey leads them to a foreboding door marked with ominous red stains. Beside it, Kate uncovers a cache of documents and a set of keys. Proceeding with caution, they enter and encounter a man named Steve, inexplicably imprisoned within a cage and chained to the wall. Like the rest, Steve claims to suffer from memory loss. Despite the group's reservations, Kate resolves to release him. As they grapple with their collective amnesia and search for answers, Steve directs their attention to another door, hinting at a potential threat lurking beyond its confines. <laughs> Upon closer scrutiny, Kate discerns another individual in need of assistance behind the door. Opening it reveals Melissa, bound in a straitjacket and mask. Kate immediately moves to free her, eliciting dissatisfaction from the others. As shadows once again begin to writhe upon the walls, the monstrous entity launches another assault, hurling massive spears at the group. Through quick reflexes, everyone narrowly avoids harm. However, the relentless entity continues its pursuit, ultimately claiming Melissa, whose mutilated remains are discovered by the group moments later. Seeking refuge in a secure location, Steve confronts Amber for her absence during the monster's attack, threatening reprisal. Kate intervenes, persuading Steve to refrain from acting rashly. Amber reiterates her grim prognosis, asserting that none among them will survive, as the monster has already dispatched all the staff. Charlie expresses confusion regarding the absence of their bodies, but the group remains bereft of answers. Despite discord and lingering suspicions, the team presses onward, eventually stumbling upon a room lined with lockers. Inside each locker are dossiers containing information on each of the strangers. From these files, they glean their names and professions. Charlie, a programmer, Stacy, a financial director at a venture company, Jack, a lawyer, Steve, a criminal, Kate, a doctor, and Amber, a mentally ill model. Melissa was a nurse, while Dave held the position of head of security. It becomes apparent that they all share a connection to the institution in some capacity. Does any of this ring a bell with anyone? In the lockers, they retrieve their belongings and don their attire, continuing to mull over their perplexing circumstances. Steve, among his belongings, discovers his gun, convinced it will offer protection against the monster, though they soon realize only bright light can halt its advance. Venturing once more into the corridor, they are suddenly drawn by the sound of a ringing phone emanating from behind one of the doors. 
Kate endeavors to unlock it using one of the keys, yet their efforts prove futile. Amber guides them to the room where she initially awoke, noting its notably superior condition compared to the others. Within, they spot a two-way mirror through which Amber had evidently been observed. Steve takes decisive action, shattering the mirror with gunfire, prompting them to enter the adjoining office from whence the phone's ringing originates. However, upon Kate's answer, they are met with silence. As attention shifts away from the phone, they observe the walls adorned with unsettling red splatters, signaling a grisly event. Charlie takes initiative, investigating the computers in hopes of uncovering insights into the institution's staff. It soon becomes apparent they are within the Dr. Manger Institute of Psychiatry, where the eponymous doctor developed a device capable of eradicating human memory. Initially devised for treating severe psychological traumas, the device's application expanded under Dr. Manger's watch. Amber emerges as the first subject of the device's trials. Subsequent attempts were made to employ it for remedying Steve's violent tendencies and Jack's catatonic syndrome. But something evidently went awry. Something about the body leading to the mind, which leads to the spirit. No one comprehends the significance of this information, as Charlie reveals that the device was utilized eight times, but there's no records after Jack's usage. Suddenly, Steve brandishes a gun at Charlie, demanding the truth, alleging that everyone else who worked here perished. However, Kate intervenes, asserting that none of them recollects or possesses knowledge, emphasizing the urgency to escape alive. Soon, the team discerns that the sole exit lies through a door Dave couldn't unlock. Learning about an electronic lock, Charlie proposes cutting off all power to prompt its automatic opening. Nevertheless, Steve cautions against this, citing the monster's aversion to light. Despite Steve's warning, the others endorse Charlie's plan. Yet, he stipulates the need for another computer to deactivate the generator. Kate recalls a computer in the lab and suggests activating it. However, Charlie must remain behind to connect to the network before powering down the building. Kate worries that Charlie won't locate them without light, but he reveals a flashlight and reassures them. Amber opts to stay with Charlie, and Kate instructs them to head upstairs once the lights go out. Eventually, Kate, Jack, Steve, and Stacy reach the lab, but Kate observes Dave's absence with apprehension. Puzzled by the monster's failure to attack the old man, Jack proposes activating the computer promptly. Kate realizes the old man is linked to the memory deprivation device, bringing their group count to nine, although the device was utilized only eight times, suggesting someone is concealing information. Steve grows suspicious of Charlie, prohibiting computer activation until he and Stacy verify the exit. While Kate and Jack remain in the lab, Kate discovers the old man's identity as Jack Roberts. Recalling her partner shares the same surname, she accuses him of deception. In response, Jack confesses that the institution's staff aim to assist people and offer them a fresh start. Without the memories of who you were, you could truly become who you wanted to be. At a critical point, something went very wrong. Jack states that the interplay among consciousness, body, and soul is exceedingly intricate, revealing that their connection proved to be more intimate than previously perceived. Remarkably, the old man's physical form remained untouched, yet when the device accessed his brain, a rupture occurred. Allegedly, his soul departed his body, transmuting into the very entity haunting them. This entity now exists devoid of both brain and body, driven to consume any life it encounters. Jack further claims that the entity targets them due to Kate's actions. She locked the building, preventing both the shadow and himself from escaping outside. Suddenly, Kate recognizes Jack as Dr. Manger. Prompted by this revelation, she queries her own identity, to which Dr. Manger reveals she is his wife. As Kate grapples with the shock, Dr. Manger activates the computer, enabling Charlie to establish the required connection. Then Dr. Manger explains that Nurse Melissa believed he had gone too far in his experiments and reported it to Stacy during their annual inspection. Left with no alternative, he resorted to brainwashing them to stop from interfering. Charlie and Dave stumbled upon this revelation and suffered a similar fate. Kate seeks clarification regarding his motives and actions toward her. In response, Dr. Manger acknowledges his affection for her and admits to erasing all unnecessary thoughts to preserve their love. You are sick bastard! Dr. Manger doesn't argue with his wife, he simply states that they'd better undress, as those who had no memory didn't wear clothes, and the shadow prefers those whose identity remained untouched. Meanwhile, Steve and Stacy return to the lab, only to find the computer operational. Abruptly, Dr. Manger assaults Steve with a scalpel, claiming his life. Instructing Stacy to flee, Kate strikes her husband before following suit. Charlie successfully cuts off the electricity, unlocking the door, but the remaining individuals must navigate to it in darkness. Discovering a distressed Stacy in the sensory deprivation chamber, where the light's still on, Kate reveals the truth about Dr. Manger. However, he appears at the door wielding a gun, vowing to prevent their escape and the divulgence of his experiments, subsequently locking them in. While Charlie and Amber continue their quest for an exit, a looming shadow materializes behind them. 
Luckily, they evade detection by submerging themselves in the pool. Emerging prematurely, Charlie witnesses the shadow emerge from the drain, engulfing Amber. As Kate and Stacy perceive movement from the pipes, the entity draws near. Stacy opts to conceal herself in the chamber, but the shadow effortlessly infiltrates through the lid, consuming her. Dr. Manger is the first to reach the coveted door, but on his way, he encounters Steve, who is still alive. Steve wounds him with the scalpel, but the doctor shoots him in response. Approaching the door, Dr. Manger is confronted by a menacing shadow looming behind him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Charlie frees Kate from the room, and she divulges the truth about Dr. Manger to him. Soon, they find themselves at the exit, only to be confronted by the shadow. Stealing themselves, they charge directly at the terrifying entity, warding it off with the bright beams of their flashlights. They manage to escape outside, yet the shadow continues to pursue them through the dark forest. Kate and Charlie run without looking back, but suddenly stumble and fall to the ground, with the monster looming over them. Fortunately, at that moment, the sun begins to rise, flooding the forest with brilliant light and tearing the entity apart. Regaining their composure, Kate and Charlie confirm the disappearance of the shadow and embark on a new life. What would you do if you lost all memories of your life? Share your thoughts in the comments below, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.